Okay, so we're going to talk about refraction. <clears throat> of course, the first question is, what is refraction? Refraction is the bending of light what passes from one material to another. We call the the place where the light meets the materials the interface. And so right now I've got a beam of light coming out of a, a laser and it's going from air to air. So there is no refracting going on right here. So let's go ahead and change this bottom material to water. Okay, so we change the material to water. The blue area at the bottom is now water and we have air at the top. There's two things going on. One is it's bouncing off. We have a reflection going on. The other one is the light is continuing through the water, but it's bent a little bit. And why is it bent? Why does it bend when it enters that material? Well, one way to get a clue as to how it's bending is to look at it in another form. Let's look at this in a wave form. Okay, so now we have these waves coming out, and we see that these waves are regularly spaced, and they represent sort of the wavelength of this light. And when they hit the water, one thing you notice is they bend. And the reason they're bending is because the light is passing more slowly through the water. And so there's some compression going on there as these waves come down. They sort of stack on one another, and they pivot at the same time. And the reason they pivot is because one end of the wave is hitting the water first. The other end is still traveling at the speed of light, the full speed of light, so it sort of pivots around that entry point and it always bends towards what we call the normal. Now right now we don't have the normal being shown. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the normal and there it is, this dotted line, and we always measure these angles relative to the normal, so we call the incoming beam, that incoming angle where the beam um, comes in, we call that the angle of incident. And then we call the angle where the light's bending inside the second material, we call that the angle of refraction. And we have a secondary effect going on here, and that's the reflection of the light. Um, light is reflected at a surface just like it's refracted. And we can check that, we can check the amount of reflection by changing this angle here of the beam. And one thing we notice is that as we get vertical, we have this reflected angle. And notice it's always the same. The angle of reflection is always equal to the, the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. So we're going to move this down, and what we're going to notice is that the reflection gets more and more pronounced. We see the uh, intensity of that beam getting more and more intense as we come down, and at some point we have a situation where the beam is almost all reflected and very little of it's refracted. Now this is even more pronounced in a situation where we invert everything. So let's assume that the beam is starting in water and it's heading towards air. Okay, so we see this reflection going on. We're going from a, a denser material to a less dense material, air, which by the way has, for the most part, so we always say that the index of refraction for air is the same as the vacuum. It's a very slight difference. All right, now let's take this beam and move it a little bit, and we're going to notice something really strange happen here. As I move it, I get to a point where none of the beam is entering the air anymore. And this is what we call total internal reflection if you notice the beam is just being reflected. We can take this down and notice that it's all reflected. And this is the principle that we use for materials like fiber optics. Because if we imagine this blue material being something like plastic, and we had an air interface at the top, just like we do at the bottom, this beam is just going to bounce back and forth between the two interfaces. And so we can pass it through a tube of material if we take some plastic and form it into a, a long skinny cylinder we can pass light through it from one end to the other and even if we bend the tube the light will bend with it. 
So this is an interesting property of materials that turns out to be very useful. Okay, now I'm going to get things back to normal here. We're going to go from air to water. And now we're going to look at the angles here. Let's see, we got a little protractor here. I'm going to take that and put that out here. And we're going to set this angle right here to 30 degrees. So the angle of incidence here is 30 degrees. Now if we look down and look at the angle of refraction, which is going to be from the normal to the beam, we notice that that angle looks like it's around maybe 22 degrees. Each of those major tick marks is 10 degrees. So we have 10, 20, and a couple of minor tick marks. So that's 22 degrees. Using Snell's law, we ought to be able to come up with the index of refraction of the material. Now we know we're going to come up with 1.33 approximately because we know this is water. But we're going to do the math anyway and see if this is correct, if this uh, simulation works well. Okay, we're going to work Snell's law for the previous situation we just saw in the simulation. We had a angle, an incoming angle, an angle of incidence, or theta 1, was equal to 30 degrees. And we had theta 2 was equal to 22 degrees. So we need to set up this formula. We're really solving for index of refraction 2 right there. So this is what we're really solving for. Now the index of refraction um, 1 is really air. So, you know, this is air, which equals 1. So we can essentially just ignore that. So what we end up with is the formula sine theta 1 equals the index of refraction for the second material times the sine of the angle for the second material. Now since we're solving for index of refraction, all we really need to do is divide both sides of the equation by the sine of theta 2. And so if we do that, we'll end up with sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2 equals the index of refraction for the second material. And as I said before, we took uh, the index of refraction for the first material, since it was air, we just took that out of the equation since it was just equal to 1. There's no sense in putting that in there. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring up my calculator. And we're going to plug these numbers in. The uh, angle 1 is 30 degrees, so we're going to plug in 30 sine. And we're going to divide that by the sine of 22, so we enter 22 sine. And now we're just going to divide those two by hitting equal. And that gives us a index of refraction of 1.33. Now 1.33, this is a dimensionless number. That means it's really just a ratio of two units that are the same. So it's a dimensionless number, and what it really represents is the ratio of the speed of light C divided by the speed of light in the material. All right, and since this velocity in the material is always less than the speed of light, there's, there's nothing faster than the speed of light in a vacuum, then we know that this number is always going to be greater than 1. So one of the things you need to do as a check is make sure that you, you have an index of refraction that's greater than 1, or you've made a mistake. One other thing, 
Notice that with the protractor in place, we see that the angle of refraction or the angle of reflection is the same as the angle of incident. So we have 30 degrees coming in, we have 30 degrees going out. And no matter what we do with this, if we take this to 60, then our angle of reflection is going to be 60 degrees. So that is a very simple law that you need to know that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incident.